just like practically speaking, what what are you doing? Like, what's what's a day to day like for you right now? Well, I uh, spend a lot of time on our players' academics and making sure they're doing what they need to do and doing what they need to do to maintain eligibility and, and get towards uh, get towards graduation. Spend some time on scheduling. Uh, try to read a little bit every day. Try to <laughs> work on some basketball stuff every day. Um, you know, and just obviously recruiting as well. So we try to try to partition my day out a little bit and make sure that we're, you know, in as close to a normal routine as possible. I, I still get up every morning and run and, you know, try to shower. And some days I go in to go into the office for a few hours. And some days I just, you know, I, I stay at home and work. But really just as a, a mixture of a uh, mixture of, uh, but I try to, Keep as as much of a routine as I possibly can. I'm sorry. Did you say you try to shower every day? No, no. I'm saying I shower every day to stay in routine. I do shower every day, sometimes multiple times, man. That's good. That's good to know. What's the best thing you've read lately? Um, just got done with uh, um, uh, I thought uh to find the title of it here for you so i don't screw it up <laughs> did, did i stump what, you yeah what you do is who you are really oh, good how right. to build your business culture who's the author ben, Hor- ben horowitz all right he's a he's a uh it's actually a really good book i just i finished it yesterday all right and uh it was actually really good just different he talks about different leadership and it's kind of told i mean there's a leadership of a uh talks about leadership principles of a guy who led a prison gang in in the michigan prison system uh obviously different historical figures it's just it's it's a it's a uh basically showing how leadership is the same across all uh across all uh, all different uh all different types of uh people the same core principles can apply whether you're coaching basketball or uh, running a business or, you know, whatever, running a radio station, whatever it may be. And so it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good, uh, good book. I got some good, good notes out of it. And uh, hopefully some stuff I can, I can pass on, uh, pass on to our guys. I try to get, uh, we do like life lessons with our players and I do lessons with them and stuff. So I get a lot of my thoughts and things from the different books that we read. All I know is that if you're leading a prison gang, you got to be a hell of an influential dude. Like if you've got prison impressive, his, uh, was very impressive chip style and, and what he does and just how his uh, value system and culture system uh, was uh, very uh, you know was very different because he was in prison but it was very much aligned with like with what other great with what other great leaders do I believe so it. It, was, it was it was good it was will, good will Wade is our guest uh, found out yesterday uh, I'm sure that's what I'm sure that's what you had me on to talk well, about. Well, you know what, Coach? My, my Honestly, book, my, my my book club, right? Well, I, I mean, you've been on the show enough times to where you know I I I like to peel back the onion more so than just surface <laughs> layer stuff. I mean, you, for real though. I mean, I I think more people will will leave this today and remember you talking about the the prison guy in Michigan than whatever we talk about as it pertains to basketball. But um, so I I like I like those kinds of conversations honestly, but uh. Trendon declared uh, yesterday. Yeah. How, how does – I'm so interested in how guys are making these decisions now with so much uncertainty really on when the draft is even going to happen. So as, as much as you can, what was, what was that decision process like? Well, you know, he's, he's – uh, I actually, I, I met with Trendon on uh, – with proper social distancing, we talked on Thursday. Uh, we talked on Thursday for a while, and um, you know, I don't ever. It's not my, uh, not my job to make decisions for guys. I just gather information for them, and I gave him the information he needed. And you know, there's, I love the fact that 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 our players and every player is able to enter the, uh, you know, to 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 test the waters and, and still have the ability. Uh, to come back I'm actually I'm actually hopeful that they'll be able to you know crank up some workouts here at some point at some point in the in the near future and I think the workouts would really really 
uh, help Trenton as well because it's valuable, valuable feedback. I stick to this, and I've said this a bunch, but I don't think any of our guys who have come and gone, and we've had a bunch of guys that have that have declared. I think they've all made the right decisions for themselves. You can look at Nas and say, yeah, he didn't get drafted, but he got a lot of guaranteed money. Yep. He's making over a million dollars a year, um, and he's got a bunch of guaranteed money. And so, I think that's a that's a that's a you know, really the conversation was just here's what I'm hearing, here's the information I'm hearing. I, I think the draft's going to get pushed back to late August, um, possibly early September, which means the NCAA is going to have to push back their early entry date. Um, there's a lot of things that go into the draft. You know, they've got to be able to have a free agency beforehand because they trade player. you know, within free agency, they're trading picks, they're trading draft spots. So there's an order of operations that the NBA has to use uh, with everything to make it, you know, to make the draft happen right. And so I think it's going to be hard to, to, to move it up much past that. But, uh, you know, we just talked to Trenton about, hey, here's the feedback we've got compared to the feedback you're getting. And he's just got great, great people around him. His brother's been through the draft process. Uh, his father uh, has been through the draft process with his brother and, and, and been through been through other things. And so um, he's got great people around him. He's going to have all the information that he needs between them and what we're gathering for him. And, and uh, he'll make the best decision uh, for himself. And at the end of the day, that's, that's what it's about, putting him in the – in the uh, in the right situation to make the best decision for for his future, and I think he'll have all the information available uh, to do that. But you know, it's what I've told him the whole time is, with the uncertainty, you want to keep options. You know, the the, the number one thing to have in, in uncertain times is to have, but you want to have options. And, and Trendon is certainly uh, keeping his uh, keeping his options uh, keeping his options open. Uh, with regards to the uh, with regards to the draft, uh, you hit on exactly the thing that I'm most curious about. Which, and you alluded to the fact that you think the NCA will have to push back the, the the date for declarations and then the opportunity to return. Ha- and, and none of us knows definitively, unless if if you do and it's not been disclosed. But what I'm most curious about is if that moves back, right? If the NBA draft moves back, and so the deadline for college athletes to make the decision if they're going to return subsequently moves back. How does that affect you and trying to build a roster for the fall? Yeah, you know, I, I get, I've been asked that a lot, and my answer is my answer is pretty much the, uh, my answer is pretty much the same. You know, it's it's not what's best for us; it's what's best for the it's what's best for the player. Uh, 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 you know, I, I think uh, it's, it's what's best for the players and what's best for them. And it's on us as coaches uh, to figure it, uh, to, to, to figure it out. You know, it's on us as coaches to figure out the roster spots and, and to figure out how everything, how, how everything works. And so really, uh, I think the best way to, uh, you know, the best way to, the best way to look at it is, is, you know we're gonna do we're gonna do what we need to uh, what we need to do to make sure our roster is the best that it that it can possibly be, um, and, and and we'll certainly keep a spot for Trenton. But usually what happens is, you know, like I said, I knew last week. It's not like we just pop, Trenton just popped that graphic right. out there. And <laughs> Kent just prop, popped the the press release out there and the video we posted today. Like that was all in the work last week. Like we usually know a week to 10 days beforehand, you know, you, you have a pretty good read of the tea leaves on what's going on and, 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 and what's happening. And so I, I don't think this will be any different, but, but we'll, um, you know, we'll, we'll certainly have to plan in recruiting uh, for that. And we're going to, you know, we'll leave a uh, spot open for, for, for Trendon if he, if he does want to come back. And then certainly if we feel like he is, uh, you know, it's leaning towards he's getting great feedback and getting the feedback he wants and can be able to, to get a uh, guaranteed, you know, some guaranteed money and some guaranteed money that he's comfortable with, and we'll proceed and fill the roster out as we need to. But that's really secondary. What we want to do is what's best for Trenton and what's best for the Watson family, what's best for all of our guys, and make sure that they're in the best position and they don't need to worry about us as much as they need to worry about making the best decision for them. And if the best decision for them is to come back, then we'll start worrying about everything we need to do at that point. Will Wade is with us. If if the draft deadline that does move in into the fall, I mean just practically speaking, 
I mean, like kids would have to be enrolled in school, right? I mean, it just seems like the, yeah. it, it, would, oh, yeah. it would be I really mean, cumbersome if it does move into the fall. Yeah. I mean, my guess is, uh, you know, the the date would be sometime in mid-July, maybe early August, mm-hmm. mid to late July, maybe early August. If That would be the date that the – that the uh, uh, that the uh, that the people would uh, you know that, that people would uh, push it back to to where we'd have to make that where we'd have to make that decision or where Trendon would have to make that decision. But like I said, it's all going to be based on the NBA's timeline. I mean, yeah. The NBA operates totally separate from the NCAA, and quite frankly, the NC the NBA doesn't care about the NCAA that yeah. much, and they pretty much bully them at any at any any time possible. Um, on on many different issues, so I, I think this is going to be solely a NBA timeline. And you know, on the flip side, it may force some of the um, you know some of the kids into some tougher decisions if the if the NBA draft's going to be in, let's say early September and yep. the dead and the and the deadlines late July, and you know the travel isn't lifted for a while. You know, it, it, it could really speed things up. But we just need to we're just going to have to sit back and really just see how it uh, see how it goes at this point. And, you know, I don't think there's no doubt it could. I don't think there's any doubt it could put us in a, in a little bit of a tight spot. But hey, that's that's the nature of the uh, that's the nature of the beast, and yeah. it's a first world problem. Everybody wants to have a kid who <laughs> could get drafted and to go through this, so it's it's definitely a first world problem, and we look at it that way. It's also unprecedented, so it's going to be interesting how you and other coaches navigate this this sort of world. Uh, a, a couple more things quickly. I, I I don't want to keep you too much longer. A, any word on? The other guys like that are, are making uh, decisions yet. Three guys go through this process last year in return. Any idea when you might get word from them? Yeah, I mean we've we've uh, had conversations with Darius Days today, and and we talked to Javante. I mean, I think I think um, you know I'm, I don't want to speak for anybody, sure. but but I feel you know I feel comfortable with where everybody is and their process and how it fits with what uh, you know what they need, and and so I think. I think we're in a we're in a good spot with everybody, and like you know, let's just put it this way: I, I expect we'll have a very very good basketball team next year. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not worried about uh, the guys we got. I think we'll have a, a very very good team and a team that can compete and will compete at the top of the SEC. All right, how many days consecutively have you done your mile? Oh, I've keep doing it during the uh, during the time uh, during during all this time off. I've been running. I try to run somewhere between two and a half and five every morning. So. Getting up, getting up and trying to knock it out. Are you like into like five years now? Have you missed ever? No, I'm over. Yeah, I'm over five years now. That's so incredible. We're, we're making progress. Making progress. What's it going to take for you to miss? Ooh, I don't know. That my original thought was I could do it for ten years, and so <laughs> I'm going to see if I can get to ten years. It's not crazy, right? Ten. You're halfway there. Not as crazy as it was when I started. So. Huh. I'm hoping, uh, hoping I can uh, just keep it rolling. Don't twist your ankle or anything, man. I'd hate like that would suck if you just like stepped off a curb and then twisted your uh, ankle. I, or... I shouldn't say this, but when I was the head coach at VCU, we played at Rhode Island, and I kicked the scores table so hard I broke my toes. I broke two of my toes, <laughs> and uh, I had to run for like I had to run for like a month on these broken toes. It was <laughs> it was it was brutal. It was very very painful. <laughs> You know, all right, coach. I stand corrected. The thing people remember from this is not going to be your book club thing or anything about the draft. It's going to be that you ran on broken toes at VCU. So that's what we had to do. That's you do what you have to do. Uh, it's always a pleasure, man. Thanks for a couple times, uh, a couple minutes of your time here, and uh, health and safety to you and your family, man. Same to you. Thanks, bud. All righty, <laughs> he gets it every time.